Hello again, Graham Cox from Moody Views. This is the full video demonstration for the spring step-by-step -step article for the fantastic Leisure Painter magazine. And for this particular picture I'm going to be using the new 48 design pastel pencil set along with my 14 Rembrandt Sky Plus set plus a couple of Rembrandt pastel greens. I'm going to be using a piece of uh, A4. This is the new grey toned 180 gram paper and all of this is uh, from Royal Talons. The other tools you uh, may see me using during this picture is the number six soft chisel edged colour shaper, my double ended uh, eraser and uh, I've got a, a sharp scalpel blade or a small Stanley knife uh, will do. Uh, this particular painting is a, a 20 by 20 centimeter square and my paper has been taped to a piece of smooth board propped at a slight angle to allow any excess pastel dust just to, uh, to drift down. So I'm going to start this picture using the uh, the lighter blue so I'm using the side of the pastel stick and as you can see as I'm laying this on here there's there's plenty of paper still sort of showing through there's plenty of gaps we're not trying to do the sky in one hit so I'm now going to switch to the slightly warmer blue This is the 5707, the phalo blue. And then I'm going to use the darker blue. This is the 506 ultramarine deep, 5067, sorry, ultramarine deep at the top there. I'm trying to make the sky just that little bit bluer, that little bit more darker at the top. This all helps with uh, recession. And then I'm going to use a little bit of uh, the darker blue violet. This is 5485. Just up in that top corner, up there. I'm going to give all those colours a blend, push them down into the tooth of the paper. And again, even at this stage, you may find that once you've done this, you've got a few patches of paper still showing through. We can go back in and we can add some more colour. Because we didn't go too heavy with that first application of colour, we've still got some tooth left. So we, we've, we've still got that freedom to, to add more colour, to, uh, to gradually build things up a bit. Where I don't want too much pastel is around here, where I'm going to be putting the foliage uh, on the tree there. I don't want to be adding too much pastel into that. I want to try and keep as much as the tooth or the texture of the paper as I can. Give that a good push in. Now this is a spring scene, so I've got a nice blue sky for it. It's a touch more purple and a touch more ultramarine deep up in that corner. just going to introduce now some very small clouds into the distance so this is the um, 37210 the, the permanent red and where I've used it before I've got a flat edge there so I'm going to put this pastel down so the flat edge is flat and just very lightly move it around in some little circles And 
I'm going to put a tiny touch of permanent red deep. This is a 3718 just to give it a little bit of warmth and then a little bit of shadow colour. This is the lighter blue violet pastel, the um, 5487. And then again, just with a little finger, a few little circles, just soften it in and, and it'll mix with the blue colour that's underneath and it'll fade off. Just a few little distant clouds way back, way back in the distance. And that's all we need. That's all I'm going to do with the, with the sky. Okay, so I'm going to work now on the uh, distant hills and I'm going to switch to the pastel pencils. So this is the number 14. And I'm going to add into that a little bit of the number 58. just to make this hill a little darker than that one. Bring it down in front of it. And I'm going to run into that a little bit of number 88. This is a kind of light greeny grey colour. And then a little hint of uh, number Well, number 62 this is. So it's a, a kind of mix of those uh, those four colours. And I'm just going to take a finger and run it along there and just push that colour in and let that mix together way back in the distance we don't want too much detail back there too far away what I am going to put in now is the the distant oilseed rape fields, the, the, the lovely yellow fields that we get at this time of the year. So this is the number 21, nice bright, bright yellow back through there. Little hints of that showing through those trees, it might all get covered up but I'm not going to blend that. I don't want it to dull at all. I want that to stay quite bright. I'm going to take the white pencil and just put the tiniest little hint of a few little buildings back in the distance there. And then using the darker green, greeny grey, this is number 78. I'm going to just hint at some little hedgerows just separating the fields back there in the distance. A few little bushes in the hedgerow here and there. And then we've got a, a distant tree just here, way back in the distance. So I'm just using the side of the point, very light touch, to give an indication of a shape.
So just using this light grey colour and very little detail, it just helps that tree to sit back in the distance. Okay, gradually working forward. So then I'm going to go to a little bit of the black, and this is number 10. And using the pencil on its side, I'm just going to hint now at some, some bushes and shrubs that are at the base of these trees. And then I'm going to put a sheet of glassy. This is an acid free crystalline leafing paper. I'm going to sit this onto my uh, picture so that I don't smudge what I've just done. I'm just going to sit that there and rest my hand on it while I get the basic shapes of these, these lovely old trees in here. So I'm not pressing hard with this pencil. Now when I come to do these branches you'll see me twist the pencil and at the same time I'm easing the pressure off so that uh, we get these lovely fine tapered points to the ends of the uh, of the branches. that little twist as the pencil goes. What it also does is, is it keeps a point on the pencil rather than wearing one side of the point down. By twisting it like that you, you're continually resharpening it. Okay I'm going to introduce a few other colours onto that now. So I'm going with a little bit of brown. So this is 81. bit of uh, a creamy colour 75 the sunlight is coming from the right so I'm just introducing a little highlight at the, the left hand sides sorry the right hand sides sunlight's coming from the right touches of other colours into here. And finally a little highlight of white. We can always go back at any time and uh, touch anything up that needs, needs doing. So just coming forwards now in front of this street, I've gone back to the black side of the point again. And I'm going to do the next tree. So I'm going to start off on the shadow side. Remember, this is going to have uh, some spring foliage on the end of this, uh, on the end of these branches. So we don't need to worry about putting in all the tiny little branch, uh, twigs and things on the ends. And this one's coming across in front of that one.
Okay, switching colours, a little bit of brown. Just a few warmer colours on the sunlit sides. We can put all sorts of colours in here. Finally, a little white highlight. Okay, so I'm going to go to the brighter green pencil. This is number 60. And I'm going to bring some grass down into this area here. And then down into this area here. Just using the side of the point. And I'm going to run a little bit of the, the yellow colour that we used in the distant field over the top of that green. So this is 21. Just to lighten the field in the distance. I'm going in with a little bit of a hedgerow and a nice gap in it just there to create a gateway so this is using the brown so it's darker than the distant fields and I'm just going to put a little bit of dark green 96 on there as well and a little touch of black as well just to darken the base of that it fades off as it gets further away there, as it goes into the distance. Right, a little bit of dark into here. Back to that um, bright green. there for a minute because I'm going to put the foliage onto the branches of the tree. Okay so to do this I'm going to switch to the the, um, the little bits of green pastel. So this is 6263 and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub it on a spare bit of paper at, at the bottom here just to create a flattish edge. And then using that flat edge completely flat to the paper, I'm just going to touch, just touch, touch and move and lift off. So the paper surface, the, the little bumps in the texture of the paper surface are just allowing this colour to sit on the tops of the little bumps. Now the, the sky colour which has been blended will be down in the little hollows and that is why it shows through the green. So you've got, to, you've got to press really lightly when you do this. So the darker colour goes on first and then exactly the same with the lighter colour. A nice clean flat edge you will find that when you start putting this colour on it will pick up some of the darker colour on the pastel. See? So just clean it off. Remember the sunlight is coming in this direction. So we're just letting the little highlights sit where the sunlight would uh, be catching.
kind of keep cleaning that colour off. You get this lovely spring, this vibrant spring, fresh green foliage colour just by using those uh, few little bits of pastel. Right, I'm going to go back to my uh, green pencil again. So put a base colour in here. So the angle of the stroke is slightly downwards and then slightly downwards from this side. I've left a few little bare patches of paper showing through, that's fine. And then I'm going to run over the top of that a little bit of yellow. So in these spring fields we get all sorts of buttercups and daisies. Back to the pastel, give that a little drag across. And I'm going to go to the dark green one, the same dark green one I used in the trees. And just put a little bit of that colour. I just want to darken the foreground. And then into this area here, I want to drop in some colour to represent um, flowers and things that are firstly in these bushes. Let's put a little drop of green onto those bushes on top of that black. Okay, so I'm going to just go back to the pencils here and just scrape and let the little fragments of colour drop onto those bushes. Don't want to overdo this but just some little bits of colour. Just let them drop. Sit on there. I'm going to put some into the grass now. So these are, they could be primroses. Could have some bluebells. All these little fragments of colour at the moment they're not actually fixed to the uh, to the painting so if we were to stand this up at this point, a lot of that would actually drop off. So in a second we'll press that with the uh, glassing and just fix it. So I'm just running a little bit more colour into, into the field here, in the foreground. Okay, so take our sheet of glassing. We've got to be very careful that when it goes down, it goes straight down. It doesn't slide sideways. So I'm going to hold it off the picture and then just let it drop and then I'm going to press just lightly to start with just give the whole thing a good press so those little fragments of colour now are being fixed into the painting surface I'll take it off carefully and there you have a lovely little spring scene just with a few colours and uh, if you've uh, been inspired to have a go at this pastel painting, the outline drawing of this image will be available as a free download from the Pastels, Tools and Paper page of the Moody Views website and that'll be on there for a few weeks. You can contact me via the link on the website or better still, you can come and see me at the fantastic Patchins Art Festival in Carvelton near Nottingham in July where I'll be demonstrating throughout the show on my stand in the Works on Paper Marquee. Hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Thank you very much. See you again.